So what do you think goes on in Area 51 then, uh, if anything? I think they test uh, advanced weapons and stuff. Like they Aircraft, build planes, weapons. Yeah, they test planes. They, uh, a lot of the stuff isn't just simply like building planes. It's, it's building the systems and the weapons that go on the planes, stuff well, like radar why, and things like that. Why would you need, um, you know, thousands of miles of empty acreage of desert? In case your plane crashes. Plane crash, weapon test. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of different sites out there. There's the sites for testing munitions and things, and then mm. there's you know, ranges where they shoot things. But if you're going to do stuff like you know shoot a rocket up, you wouldn't. First of all, you you want to have you want to have a a buffer zone mm. so people can't stand on the edge outside the fence and mm. on a step ladder and take a photo of things. Right. So you've got to have miles and miles around you that uh, just keep you from everywhere else. Right. Mm-hmm. And you want to have lots of options for doing uh, various things like different terrain and whatnot. So this is something that was recently de- declassified New reporting this morning on- uh, by the Air Force. Like, uh, they, they had recently unveiled that they were spending $22 million in mm-hmm. investigating uh, UFOs because it was happening quite frequently that members of the Air Force were seeing unidentified objects moving in really un- inexplicable ways. For example, on this video here. Unidentified flying objects in our airspace. Yeah. Oh, thank you. The New York Times speaking with five Navy pilots who've all said they've encountered UFOs during training missions up and down the East Coast. The pilots even noting that the objects were accelerating to hypersonic speed, making sudden stops and instantaneous turns, something beyond the physical limits of a human crew. Clearly, there's, there's more that footage we here. We submitted a safety report saying that there was an right unidentified object in our working space and we don't know what to do. This on the eve of a new History Channel series called Unidentified, Inside oh, America's... Oh, well, this U- just turned into an ad. Let's close that. Yeah, so that, mm-hmm. that, that video there is called the Gimbal Video, and that video and the other two videos there you've seen there are stuff that I've done a lot of work on. Mm. I've yeah. analyzed those extensively. So tell me what do you think about it. I mean, that video there is almost certainly an infrared glare. Hmm. When a plane gets very far away, the glare from the engine... Uh, can get so big that it's actually bigger than the plane itself in terms of just what it looks like on camera. You can imagine like you know, a very bright light on camera uh, just it kind of flares out and it looks bigger than the actual uh, object itself. Like someone's holding a flashlight at night. Mm. Flashlight's pretty small, but you see this bright light around it. Right. That's viewing something in infrared and it's uh, black hot. So it's actually inverted. It would normally be like a, a white, white thing there. And what's happening is the internal optics of the camera is what's making it rotate. It's kind of complicated to explain. I've got like a bunch of videos. Yeah, it's hard. It. I think it would be hard to dissuade anyone with that because it's so complex. Mm. But also what I'm thinking is like obviously the Air Force would understand that. Why would they release it and, and, and fuel? They didn't exactly release it. The Air Force didn't release it. It was one guy, uh, Luis Elizondo, who now works for the To The Stars Academy, which is Tom DeLong's uh, organization. Why'd yeah. you laugh, Dan? <laughs> because I know about Tom DeLong's whole thing, and oh. he's he's crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Tom DeLong is like believes really passionately that there is uh, alien visitors out there, and that by uh, we, wait, he's a senator or something, right? Tom DeLong? No. Oh, who is he? A former frontman for Blink One Eighty Two. Okay. <laughs> As credible as it gets. Yeah. <laughs> That's I why say. I laugh. Yeah. Because <laughs> I know there was um. I had been reading that there was a, a uh, member of Congress that mm-hmm. was uh, responsible for this $22 million. Harry Reid. Yeah. Harry Reid, the uh, senator from Nevada, is I believe. Harry Reid? Yeah. Hmm. It is. I mean, yeah, the leader of whatever he was. Wasn't it, wasn't it speculated to be somewhat of a corrupt thing because he knew? It was. Uh, yeah, the, the money went to essentially Rob Bigelow. Of Bigelow airspace. Bigelow has got contracts with NASA to make inflatable um, habitats for the space station. So he's, he's a real legit person. But he also has a very strong interest in UFOs and things. And he kind of shares this interest with uh, with Harry Reid, who's his friend. Hmm. And so Harry Reid set this thing up and Bigelow became the recipient of a lot of this stuff. And a lot, some of it Pretty went shady. into... Uh, yeah, like reporting UFOs and stuff, setting up a database, and but also just giving twenty two million dollars to your friend. Yeah, well, I don't. Yeah, <laughs> uh, your friend's company. I, it's certainly something that I would encourage people to look into, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm not going to like you know point any fingers without knowing exactly what went on. I, you know, they, it was a proper contract. It was awarded to Bigelow. 
and it's just a standard type of right. government pork, essentially. Somebody got something for their friend. Happens all the time. Like yeah. you get a bridge built in your hometown or whatever. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean it's super corrupt. It's mm. just just corruption light, the normal type corruption of corruption light. that yeah. we have uh, in America. We where, have a good tolerance yeah, for the corruption pork, light. The pork system in America, yeah, where you I see. add things on. <laughs> it was 22 million over five years. Uh, it ran for those five years. They never really found anything of any interest, and so the program was Closed it up. was shut down. Yeah. But this one guy, Luis Elizondo, you saw him briefly there, he continued to be really interested in the topic, and he claims he was still working on it, and he claims the the operation was still going on. But he eventually left, and as he was leaving, he made a request that three videos that he knew of, these, mm. these three famous mm. videos, uh, Gimbal and two others, uh, be declassified. Interesting. Because he wanted to use them for Tom DeLonge's um, organization. Mm. Mm. So he would be the back and forth. He got them declassified. Uh, the Navy didn't release them as stuff. They just looked at them and said, yeah, that's nothing. You can mm. have that. Yeah. So they stamped it and gave it to him. Yeah. And then they presented as being these amazing UFO videos. Yeah. Wow. When they all have quite reasonable explanations. There's another one called Go Fast, which looks like a UFO skimming really, really fast over the surface of the ocean. But good thing about that video is you have all the all the numbers on the screen so you can figure out the angles of the camera mm. and you can do a bit of trigonometry mm. and you can figure out exactly where this object is in space and it turns out it's not over the water and it's not actually moving really really fast it's probably something like a balloon or a bird that's actually hovering around 10,000 feet and because the plane is flying past it the parallax makes it look like it's moving really really fast wow. because the camera is constantly pointing at it and turning around mm. so those things have explanations but uh, that's not what not Tom DeLong wants. Thing. Not that fun of an explanation. Yeah. What did you just send me? Oh. Uh, I believe it's the video he's referring to. Yeah. Yeah. Let's sh let's show it for reference. Yeah, I've seen this one too. I mean, it looks looks extremely compelling. Yeah, it looks like it's something that's Look at that. moving really that? really fast. It's hard but to see. You got to remember yeah. the jet itself. You, you, this isn't shot from a helicopter. This is shot from a right. jet that's mm -hmm. moving at uh, Mach 0.6. You, it looks mm -hmm. like the plane's not moving at all. 254 yeah. knots, like yeah. calibrated airspeed, which is about 300 knots, over 300 miles an hour, something yeah. probably oh, like wow. 350. So it's focused on this thing which is floating around 10,000 so, feet up in the air, yeah. and there's the ocean way beyond it. So it looks like it's moving wow. fast. Yeah. That's a problem when, well, yeah. It, for someone yeah. who's completely unequipped to understand what they're looking at, yeah. like myself, you know, just I just I'm, I would just think the the camera is not even moving sure. and, and just some of following it, the, something. The trig you do from the numbers like uh, earlier on, there was you could see that it was I think it was tilted down at a certain angle, and then when there was a range, which tells you how far away it is. So it's tilted down at this angle. It's this far away. Mm -hmm. Very very simple trigonometry. It's mm -hmm. just like you know, the sine of the angle multiplied by this gives you how far away it actually mm -hmm. is or how, how, how high it is. So you can, you can work it out. A high school, high school student could have worked out <laughs> what it was. But the To The Stars Academy, Tom DeLong, they didn't work out. They didn't do the math. Yeah. And they, ca they carry on to this day yeah. claiming that it's at sea level when you can just do the math and it's not at sea level. That's incredible. Um, it really looks like the the camera is stationary. Yeah. Yeah. And I think when you realize that the yeah. plane is yeah, that two five four in the corner is the speed calibrated uh -huh. airspeed in knots, which is actually less than the actual airspeed. Once you realize that, and you're it being viewed from twenty five thousand feet, it's three point four nautical nautical miles away and angled down at twenty two degrees. So you can just work out from that where it is, and it works out at around thirteen thousand feet, which is about halfway. To the, to the ocean. Certainly these pilots must see stuff like this all the time, if it's just like a bird or a and balloon. And by the way, remember that's what it said about that other video. Because I remember we talked about it when it came out, like a, we read the article. Mm -hmm. And it said that they reported that they would see it multiple times a day. <laughs> with that thing true. that you said, the yeah, was glare. Yeah, they're, they're seeing uh, other things there. The thing is about all these videos is that we don't really, we have all these reports from pilots and they say they see things like lights in the distance or occasionally things zipping by them. And then we have these videos, but we don't have the two together. We don't have mm -hmm. a pilot saying, I took a video of this thing and it was doing this stuff. Mm -hmm. So you've got like the- right. conflicting. Yeah, you've yeah. got this, this one pilot saying uh, there was a tic-tac that was like zipping around like this. 
And then they also show a video of something that's not doing anything. Not, it's a different video of that. You just see this little white dot in the distance and it's not moving at all. And they say, well, you know, we've got the evidence, but <laughs> there's no connection between I this see. guy yeah. and this video. So mm -hmm. we need to get the person who took the video to say what's actually going on. Mm -hmm. all right. And we don't have that. And we have explanations for that's all of it. That's very interesting stuff. I think that's great. <laughs> Is there any UFO uh, footage that... Uh, through the there's so much by now that's been captured yeah. supposed evidence have you ever seen anything that you found inexplicable or all the time, compelling yeah. in, in the, in the I, well there's, there's two different things the inexplicable and compelling yeah you don't generally see those two things together right you see inexplicable things all the time you mm -hmm. see a little white dot up in the up in the sky and you can't explain what it is exactly you can come up with some hypotheses as to what it might be it might be a plane or it might be a blimp or it might be a balloon or it might be a bird or it might be a cloud it might be a little bit of uh, lint that's very close to you or some kind of <laughs> seed or something that's very close to you. You could be having a temporary uh, like uh, brain storm or something and your visual system's messed up. So there's all kinds of things that things might be. Mm. Uh, but often you can't figure out what it is. So the fact that we have UFO videos that are not identified is, is going to be a given. UFOs exist at the boundary between identifiable and not you know, identifiable. So they're just a little bit beyond. If we could zoom in on the things, you can identify them. Mm. Uh, so as camera technology has improved recently, UFOs tend to get further and further away. Uh, we used to right, get right. photos of UFOs, which were just like hovering over people's houses. Yeah. Right. But now we get ones that are like hovering over a nearby mountain because yeah. we've got these super zoom cameras that can zoom in all the way. And we are, we're all carrying around like you know, high definition yeah. 4K well, cameras in our true. pockets. Mm. So... <laughs> the, the boundary at which UFOs exist has somehow shifted further and further away <laughs> as camera technology has improved right. because we're able to now to identify all these things that are closer. Yeah. If mm -hmm. I was to take something, a photo with my, my iPhone, it's such high resolution, you can, you can tell what things are. Whereas yeah. when people were taking pictures with uh, their Kodak Instamatic, <laughs> it was just this blurry little blob. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, do you think there's a problem, like, with the theory of aliens visiting the Earth to begin with? Yeah. Is, it, is that a plausible uh, theory at all? It, it's po a possible theory. I wouldn't call it a plausible theory. you right. you got to look at, like, you know, the evidence for the existence of aliens to start off with. Uh, there's complete radio silence throughout the, the entire nearby galaxy. Uh, we don't have any signals uh, coming in from people that we can even point to as being slightly alien-like. Mm. I'm actually having a guest on my podcast uh, next week called uh, Seth Shostak, who's the head of SETI, mm. the Search for Extraterrestrial right. Alien Intelligence. And yeah. he'll tell you that you haven't really had any good mm. candidate uh, signals. The occasion they get excited about something and then they figure out it was just the microwave down the hall like <laughs> doing something. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but yeah, the, the, there hasn't been any indication that there are any aliens w who use radios to communicate nearby. Mm -hmm. uh, in or and, and you think like these stars they're light years away so the radio waves take quite a while to get here and so we've got kind of like snapshots of history at various distances away and none of them have civilizations and we don't know like how long will a civilization last for mm -hmm. if a civilization was actually very very good and uh, you know at surviving they would actually populate the galaxy relatively quickly because they'd right. be able to send ships to nearby stars and populate all those things. So you'd expect to see uh, a lot of activity. A lot of activity. Yeah. Yeah. Like stars everywhere being turned into Dyson spheres, which is where they right. use all the energy to, right. to power things. Well, that's uh, quite depressing. Yeah. We don't, so we don't <laughs> see anything. It feels like we're in this dead galaxy. How, long, how far away can we tell? Can we see? I guess visible light, right? Yeah, yeah we, we could see the stars. So we could see if there was some kind of large structure around the star. There was recently an interesting thing where they found this star that had this kind of, it was variable in a way that made them think it was something like a Dyson sphere mm. going around the star with holes in it so the star would shine out now mm. and then. Mm. But I think that turned out to be you know, something something else. I'm not sure they ever figured it out. I remember out. that one that came up. Yeah, Wouldn't but that be so you know, it's like that's <laughs> that's the one. That's the one thing that they <laughs> right. discovered, and it was probably like you know a hundred million light years away. 